summer thunderstorms, July 4th firecrackers, and other scary sounds, tonight's guests are going to help you and your pets deal with these special challenges. Come on, all you doggies, won't you walk with me? I'm the puppet, 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 puppet. Hi there. If you're not familiar with the show, I'm Ann Angela Webb, the Animal Intuitive. And tonight we have some very special guests on the Animal Intuitive channel where we give animals a voice through animal communication, natural pet care, and interviews with experts uh, in the fields of animal care and advocacy. So welcome tonight. Um, we have Nancy Zadonis and Amy Snow from Tallgrass Animal Acupressure Resources. Hi, everyone. I'm Nancy. And I'll take a minute to introduce myself. I've been working with acupressure in animals for uh, about 30 years now and started in uh, around 1990. And um, first began working with people doing acupressure and did a number of horse riders. And, and after a while, they said, you know what? It's not, I needed a massage and an acupressure session, but my horse is the one who's the athlete and they're he really needs it or she really needs it. So we sort of branched out from there, worked with um, veterinarians, um, did a lot of video work so that we could see what we were doing and the impact of, that it was having on the animal. Then we went to uh, traditional Chinese medis medical school and um, that gave us the foundation to be able to create the Tallgrass Animal Acupressure Institute and also to take those small books that we've written and really bring them into um, truly meaningful resources for people where they can um, find out about traditional Chinese medicine, the meridians, the flow, acupoints, and actually put together uh, an acupressure session for their own animal. And, and I, I failed to mention, actually, I went to Tallgrass, uh, and so uh, I can attest to what an amazing program this is and the resources that they have to help their students. So, um, and also Amy, um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. We uh, have been looking forward to it to discuss one of the really troublesome things for animals, which is loud yeah. sound. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. What we, uh, my background is I joined Nancy back 24 years ago to be exact. And we have uh, developed a lot of resources, you said, and teaching worldwide. Uh, so it's been an exciting career that we've headed into. So we're looking forward to sharing some information with everybody who's on the program at this time. So that, and YouTubers, whoever you are out there. Uh, <laughs> so let's get going on it if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and as I mentioned, as you're watching this, if you, you know, get a, the feeling that you want to, you know, invest into some of these resources or you want to um, even think about attending Tallgrass, the link is in the description. And I'll also have a link to their YouTube channel added to the description as well. So and feel free to ask questions, too, in the comments. I appreciate everyone who's here tonight. Thank you, Kimberly, Joanne, uh, Jean. Thank you, everyone. And um, also thank you for, we, we do appreciate all of your likes and um, those of you who are new here to please subscribe so you can stick around and catch you know future episodes of the Animal Intuitive channel. So, all right, so that being said, um, this is our, your presentation. Okay. We thought we would start with a presentation so that we had the context fairly clearly uh, offered to you in a digestible form. And then we're very open, even during this, to have you ask questions, if you like. I don't know where it is. Is there a chat for that? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry if you can't see it. You should be able to, but it doesn't matter. I can see the questions and I can let you know if people have questions. Great. Okay. That's really good to know. So we are talking about those loud sounds animals have to put up with we can put them into a context in our minds but it's like where do these come from i mean a firecracker oh my god it must be a gunshot i must run and we happen to have a dog uh who is from mexico and any loud sounds puts him under the bed so we know that you know mm -hmm. he had a rather traumatic first years of his life 
uh, where people either shot at him or threw things at him or whatever. So we very much understand what the issues are with dogs that are thunderphobic, firecrackerphobic, and any other loud sound. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay. Well, we've kind of introduced ourselves. We <laughs> did medicine school, and uh, this is the product of it uh, in our program, in our books, in our videos, in our charts, everything that we'll talk about later. Okay, Wonderful. next. Well, basically what we're after is a dog who can sleep like that during <laughs> that you saw. And we want to help them to sleep, even with all the big sounds around them. And that may not be 100% possible, but we, you know, depending on how long it's been there and how uh, more difficult it is for the dog, but at least we can get them to where they are trusting of you to help them. And that's one of the issues that we're going to look at. Next. Wonderful. No, this is the oh. So, what is the underlying fear of loud sounds? In uh, TCM, the hearing is based, uh, generates from the kidney and the kidney meridian. So, we're going to be looking at both the kidney meridian and the bladder meridian. Um, and the water element, because that's where fear and loud noise phobias kind of emanate from, from, the, from that dual perspective. And while we're doing that, we'll, we'll talk about that from a Chinese perspective, but then we're going to give you some real uh, that points that you can put to use on your own animal. So we're going to start out with the broader picture and then narrow down to specific points to help your animal. So we're actually going to start out with what is kidney chi. You know, kidney chi is what Nancy mentioned, but we're going to look at chi first, chi in and of itself, and the fact that it emanates from that the kidney is in charge of it. So let's go to the next slide to talk a little bit more about chi, and then we'll come back to kidney. Okay. So that's called the Taiji symbol. And basically what we're showing is the two aspects of chi. And chi is life promoting energy, but the two aspects of chi are yin and yang. And the blue going down is associated with yin because it's water and it's thicker and it's heavier and it uh, flows down. Whereas fire, the red, goes up. So this is an amazing, frankly, uh, symbol that it's a, created by the Tao and you, if you tried to divide it in any way, what you would have to do uh, is you'll never do it 100%. You'll never get half and half. You can't get it half and half. The point of that is that it's a dynamic balance between fire and water within the body. It's a dynamic balance that uh, it runs the whole system, the whole dog's body, the whole cat's body our bodies as well. So let's move on. So is that a better, if anybody has questions about chi, please put them up. But chi is life force energy, life promoting energy. You have water, which is the nutrient part of your body. Um, and I see, there's Julie Hannon, Hannon so hello. <laughs> we see her in there. We, uh, thank you for joining us. And we're looking at the fire part is how things are moved in the body. So you have the nutrients of the body and the substance of the body is more yin in nature, whereas the yang is how the blood gets moved, how the fluids get moved, how uh, digestive process takes place. So that's chi. And, and what Amy said earlier about dynamic balance, that's the goal of acupressure, is to create dynamic balance within the body so that there's a free flow of chi throughout without impediment and the balance and there's exists then balance and health and well-being next so looking at yin and yang just taking another quick look at understanding it there's a list there but think of the fact that it could it's raining all night and you wake up to the puddles 
and luckily the sun count comes out. What happens to the puddle? Well, the puddle is yin in nature, because it's water and it's cold in nature, and the fire is the sun that actually evaporates it. So if you had an animal that was dehydrated, for instance, you're looking at a very young animal, they need to drink more water or somehow become, get uh, more water into them to balance. We're trying to create balance. So let's take a look, just thinking it through, uh, with an animal who is scared, big sound, wants to run under the bed, in our case with little Hugo, and he's pretty hot and scared. He's pretty active young. So we need to come up with a way to help him by adding cooling aspects to him to create the harmonious flow of chi back in his body. Because right now he's stuck in he's stuck in fear. So we want to help him calm down. And that's part of cooling, is, is sort of a calming effect. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be looking at, is trying helping the animal to rebalance and have a harmonious flow of chi. So you're looking at yin and yang in that chart and basically just a little more understanding of what it's about. Yang energy tends to go, it's hot, it's light like the sun, it goes up, it goes outwards, it's expansive and it is stronger in nature. And where you have the opposite, so you can show that it's actually the opposite, creating the balance because it's the opposite. It's cold, darker in nature, flows downward, is more inward as opposed to young, which is more outward, and tends to be considered weak. But remember, we're talking about energy, energy that the only way it can function in the body is you have to have, for instance, a positive negative flow. You're gonna have up, down, up, down, up, down, along a balance line, so you're gonna have positive with any wavelength because Chinese medicine is an energetic uh, medicine. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about energies that is in waves. So that's what's flowing through our bodies. That's what's flowing through the dog cat body as well. Next. So let's uh, get back to the kidney. We've talked about chi. So what would kidney chi be? Well, kidney chi in the idea of Chinese medicine, and you can see the little puppies to the side. If you had a, say, Boston Terrier, they kind of look like Boston Terriers. If you had a Boston te uh, Terrier mommy and a Boston Terrier daddy, the odds are that you're going to get a Boston Terrier puppies. I don't know how many, but it looks like there's quite a few in that little bucket of bowl, bowl of puppies. Uh, so if you had a golden retriever mommy and a golden retriever daddy, you're going to get probably golden retrievers. Well, that's the DNA. So kidney chi is basically DNA, as we understand it in, West, in the Western world. And they call it prenatal chi, or before the original chi that the animal arrives on Earth with. So, and that's very, very important. Uh, if, for instance, you look at puppy mill dogs, unfortunately, they usually are not very strong. They're usually not healthy. Uh, people sell them in pet stores and it is not a strong animal. And that's, in other words, when you have weak original chi or prenatal chi. They might look like a Boston Terrier, but internally they don't have the strength and fortitude to live a good long life. And, and clearly what Amy's talking about in that situation is the overbreeding, the bad conditions, maybe not the best food, all of the um, environmental um, and, and physical factors that we need to be to create a strong and healthy, vibrant animal. So kidney chi is involved with hearing and also the health of the actual ear. So the hearing part 
is what we're dealing with when they're listening to loud sounds. And even as they age, they're hearing, they're being shocked by the sound. So if you say, oh, my dog can barely hear, that doesn't matter. It's the shockingness quality of a firecracker going off in your neighborhood. Um, or I had a dog as she aged, she really reacted to an Irish setter and she really reacted to garbage trucks, the sound of that clank clank when they picked up the garbage. So it's the shocking quality of it. They still hear it and they feel the vibration of it. Um, so hearing acuity actually goes down as you age, but that's not how the dog reacts necessarily because there's another factor that we're gonna to get to. Uh, the emotion, and here's part of kidney. They, we have a dog who's whining. Um, we have, the, they knew that on top of the kidney was the adrenal glands. And the, the, but they used the word kidney. He's crying, I don't know who's He's crying. Oh, he wants a blanket. He's <laughs> up, gotta get our dog a blanket. Even though it's summer, he likes his blankets. It's a, it's a dog, it's a mini dachshund who I don't think, if you know anything about Chinese medicine, this poor dog has no triple heater. He just doesn't exist. He's either too hot or too cold. Anyway, uh, fear is the emotion related to kidney chi. Because they knew the adrenals there, but they do a shorthand and just call it kidney and becomes kidney part of kidney chi. The strength of the animal is based out of kidney as well. It is so basic. It's so intrinsic to the animal's being. So that's part of the strength of the courage and willpower of the animal. So it's not that these dogs aren't brave. They just need a strengthening of their courage as well. And that's based on building kidney energy. We're going to be talking about the points we're going to use when we're going into the actual points that you can start with. It's sort of general points, uh, but we also there's always another layer that you want to reinforce it with later on. So, but we're going to give you the beginnings of it. So we're going to try to show how we can calm the dog because they're fearful and scared and hot and young in nature at the time. So we're going to add calming points to create more of a balance, a more yin form for them. Uh, and also we're going to use kidney points to help enhance and build a sense of courage. So let's move on to the next one. Okay. I am actually going to try something to see if I can just fit you guys. Let me see. Ooh, no, that didn't work. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's not going to Thought I might be able to get this wider and okay, nope, that didn't work though. Let me just go back to what it was. Uh, Don't mess with what's see. working in the middle of a show again. Um, okay. Well, I commend you for yeah. wanting to get it to be as, yeah, you know, as good as it can be for everybody. And that's your goal and that's what you're doing. So just to recap just a little bit, to go back over that, kidney chi has to do with ears hearing, acuity. It also has to do with fear and building strength and courage, <clears throat> building a braver dog, so to speak. So now we can go on to the next one. <clears throat> and the kidney chi, the thing I haven't explained yet, is the dog with the original chi arrives on earth and it arrives on earth with just so much chi, you know, it's, it's this big say, you got this much chi, uh, golden retriever. <clears throat> but during the life, according to Chinese medicine, it, de it keeps going down as the dog ages, as the human ages, as we all age. So the animal comes on earth with not good original chi, then they're going to, their longevity is questionable, they're going to, odds are they're going to have hearing issues, sight issues much earlier than other dogs. So 
there can be a disruption of the chi and create a pattern of disharmony as opposed to a pattern of harmony, which is balance between yin and yang. But we also have a pattern of disharmony. How can that happen? One is poor original chi, an injury at birth or later, some kind of emotional trauma, such as our Hugo, who spent his first few years in Mexico on the streets. The odds are he uh, had a fair amount of emotional trauma. We've had to go through quite a few things with him to help him enjoy being a happy, well-loved puppy dog. So emotional trauma is a big deal. We call that emo we call that emotional trauma, we call it shin disturbances. That means the spirit of the animal has been disturbed. Shin is the spirit of an the animal in Chinese medicine. And then there's aging issues generally. As the animal decreases, hearing the odds are go down, but also their energy to deal with it goes down. And that's, we notice that as we age, <laughs> dealing with uh, shocking things. What happened? Yeah. No? Okay, we're on to the next one. So pattern of disharmony actually causes kidney chi to go down, can create hearing loss, but strangely enough, increases sensitivity to noise. And it was that shock value that I talked about in the beginning. And we want to help this animal as even as they age to deal with it. But you will see the odds are if they are reacting as a young dog, you're going to be dealing with it ongoingly and it becomes what we call a management issue. You're going to be doing acupressure <laughs> as often as possible to help this animal. And, and that said, um, we've consistently worked with Hugo since he does have these issues, particularly the, well, he has these hearing issues um, and phobias. Uh, but we've seen a really a significant improvement. When we first got him, he would run under the bed and he'd stay there. He would not want to come out. Um, hot dogs and cheese finally got him out. And, and now we're down to just calling him and he'll come out and he's not, it's just a totally different reaction to the noise. It's almost like he thinks he should do it and that's why he doesn't. It's nowhere near the significant, I'm out of here kind of reaction that he had. So um, won't come overnight, but it's really, really, really worth yeah. the effort to put in. Yeah, and it can, you're gonna do, help this animal feel a little better. And there's gonna be levels. We're going to give you the first level, but we're also going to help you understand that there's another level having to do with trust. And the trust is in you as their team leader, uh, their pack leader, or other animals mm -hmm. in your pack who can show them, oh my, it's not that awful, you know, and they might respond that way. Mm -hmm. So, but for instance, most dogs, they want to be okay, they want to be part of you. And I had another dog, a smaller dog, who any loud sound, she jumped in my lap. And that was thankfully better. But what if I wasn't home? You know, I wanted to help her become, you know, more courageous, calmer in the, her responses. So that's part of what we're going to look at. Next. Ah. <laughs> Guess who the dog on, on the right is, the white dog? Yeah, it's Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hugo. And Hugo is showing you the Ba Hui point. These two points, actually, the Yin Tang point and the Ba Hui point, are considered classical points for dogs and horses, actually. They're classical points for animals, not so much for us. Uh, but the Ba Hui point is usually a very, it's the go-to point for calming or hindquarter. Uh, hindquarter issues, but mainly what you're gonna use it here, your intention here, your healing intent for dealing with Hugo 
and his halfway point is to help him calm down. A lot of dogs, it's known as the feel good point too. I had a chest peak who used to flip my arm if I was sitting so that I'd scratch her there and she'd dance as I was scratching her. So dogs really, really love that point. And basically where it is, it's right on the sacrum as you can see. Um, as, as you're going down the dorsal midline, you'll move your hand along the dorsal midline, you'll come to a space that feels a little spongy, and that is above the lumbosacral area, and that is where the Bachwe point is. It's also known as the point of 100 meetings. It's, it's a really nice sized energy orb and very impactful point. And I have taken to not just holding that point with my hand, my finger, we're gonna go into that a little bit. So you're using a thumb, and the soft part of your thumb, or you're using tenting your fingers or holding on to the point, putting your point finger down on it using the soft tip of your thumb. But with the Bachway point, I enjoy scratching it, and so do the dogs. Mm -hmm. Just give it a scratch. Nice light, you don't have to be deep, because the meridian and the point is right beneath the skin, so you don't want to go too deeply because otherwise you're, you're actually stopping the energy, your energy helping the animal. So basically giving it a nice light scratch and then getting a little firmer as you go. And that's the, we call it, you know, working with healing intent. There's a firmness, it's a touch, it's educated, it's ed educated intuition, but it's also a touching, with intent as opposed to just doing too light so try to think of it in between there and by the way uh, thanks for asking that question and it is exactly the same for cats yes the other is simi that was one of beautiful greyhound she was 13 at that point uh that you're seeing the picture <laughs> and these are all our dogs um well not all of them you'll see pictures of friends, dogs, other people's dogs. But that's the third eye. And what does that do? That helps with focus. So you want to calm the dog. You also want to help them focus. You want to help them focus either on you or on themselves or their own body. Notice that Nancy, that's Nancy's hands, uh, has her hand, other hand, also on the dog. You always want to have two hands on the animal when you're doing acupressure. One to kind of stabilize, but feel any reactions as well from the dog. Uh, the other is, is basically a grounding technique. And I think you do that with almost all hands-on yeah. techniques. Yeah. Okay, so that's yin tang, which helps with focus. And it also helps with calming and sort of brings his the dog's energy back together. That's that's kind of the goal. Whereas the Bahwe point, the point of 100 meetings, that's the, it's a point of yang energy coming all together, helps with calming and the animal feeling more together as well. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the actual kidney points and talk about those. Yeah, talk about kidney 27. Okay, kidney 27 is one of my favorite points because it is called the association point for all association points. So it's it's really the connector. And on the human, it's right below our clavicles. And we, uh, it's if you feel for the top of the sternum, and there's a little sticking up cartilage up above the sternum, that's called the manubrium. It's on each side. Kidney 27 is on each side of the dogs and they feel like big deep holes. There's some beautiful names for the kidney 27. One of them is Elegant Mansion, which is a name I love because it's a very power, it's the end of the kidney meridian. Uh, it's the last point I should say of the kidney meridian. And what? You had something? Yeah, I'm losing it here again. 
But you can also use this point if a dog or an animal or a person is um, in a stage of passing, this is a very good point to help the animal either let go and just decide, yep, this is, I feel good about this, or the stimulation of it will, could also get them back to staying in this life. So it's known as... So a hospice the, point. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's known as the... But how we're using it and how your healing intent involved with it is kidney 27 will bring a lot of kidney chi. It will help with the courage. It will help with hearing. It will help uh, being able to sort of create a context for the hearing. That's, that's what you're after. Uh, and help the animal feel connected. Their body feel more connected. So, and it brings up their chi. Kidney three is the source point, the original point that you use for original energy of the animal. It's the deep DNA energy of the animal. And it restore, it doesn't restore it exactly, but it supports kidney chi very, very strongly. And the nice thing about the source points, uh, from kidney three being one, being a source point, is you can apply gentle direct pressure and in the image you can see it's at the point is in the the depression at the very thinnest part of the hop on the medial aspect the inside of the leg and it, it's just it's a very excellent point to to use in many different situations yeah i often describe it as the top of hock thin skin and frankly, there is one other point that you could actually do with it. Mm -hmm. And I will explain that. If you took, put your finger on the kidney three at the top of hock thin skin, and just on the equal and opposite side, on the lateral side, put your hand on the other side, finger on the other side as well, that is bladder 60. And it is known as the analgesic point. It helps with pain or any, uh, issues that the animal might be feeling, the sense of suffering in this case, is to hold that point as well. And we didn't show a picture of it, but next time I might add it. So it's kidney three on one side, bladder 60 on the other, and you can hold them together. So feel it's a point combination that will help the animal, again, have that strong sense of kidney chi flowing through their body because it balances, kidney three balances the entire kidney meridian as well as the, or, yeah, emotionally and physically, as Nancy said. It's one of the most powerful points you could possibly use. Okay, does that, I, we're going to look at the chart, so you'll have that as well to look at. Next slide, there you go. So there are the actual physical uh, descriptions of them, and you can see the third eye is the yin tongue. Then you go down to kidney 27, and that's the top of the manubrium, the two holes on each side, right in front of so the So remember dog. from the image before, it's not from this uh, two dimensional chart, it looks like it's kind of on the side, but keep in mind that front view. The, um, so that you can you know that it's just off the ventral midline. Because that may be an inch and a half to two inches, depending on the size of the dog. And then there's the Bahwe point up on top there at the sacrum. And one of the ways I find it is I go to the top of the hips. I feel the little bones sticking up. Okay, the hip bone. The, and then I just bring my fingers into the middle. And that will give you that little spongy area. And that's the Bahwe point, another classical point for dogs. And then you drop down into kidney three. Last point for this session, this little acupressure, initial acupressure session. Uh, and again, you can go top of hock, thin skin. And then on the other opposite side is bladder 60. You can hold them together. Happy to answer any questions about this either yeah. now or we actually we had a, a question about the location of kidney three inside or outside. So we kind of were 
explaining in chat, but definitely for anyone who's watching who isn't seeing the chat, might have the same question. Okay, well, the kidney three itself is on the inside, the medial side. Thank you. Of the leg, whereas bladder 60 is on the outside, the lateral side. Okay. So I hope that helps. Uh, we have another question. Um, Julie asks, is it okay to apply pressure to both rear points at the same time? And do you, well, let's start with that and then we'll. Uh, you're meaning bladder 60 and kidney three, I'm assuming. And yes, it is. You can actually use that as a point combination. If you're doing a session, that would serve as one point. Another really good use of those two points is if your dog has had any kind of surgical procedure, those are really good points to work because the aspirin point will help relieve pain in any part of the body and the kidney source point will um, build and support the overall kidney function of the body in TCM perspective. So one of the things that things that's pretty interesting is that points have lots of different attributes and energetics. So you can use those same points for um, sur surgery, and you can also use them to um, support the kidney chi and, and, and help with the issue of thunderphobia. Yeah, the calming points, there are a number of them, but these are two that we find extremely powerful in and of themselves. Most of the classical points are, and the source point is extremely powerful. These, these are the most common points to use for these issues. Uh, but I wanted to make sure I, we, if the question had to do with whether we can call, hold yin tang at the same time we hold ba hui, you can, but I'm, and it wouldn't be bad, frankly, but I think you should look at initially when you're doing this, when you're starting with your animal, start with doing one at a time and see the reaction. Then if the reaction looks like it's, you know, the, the kidney point is having good effect, then you could hold uh, kidney 27 and kidney three at the same time, or yin tang and ba hui at the same time. It, there's no absolute rules. That's, you know, it's mainly how the animal's gonna react. And that's what you're after. And, and one thing to be aware of with, with working with the yin tang and the ba hui is you kind of are putting yourself over the dog. And sometimes mm -hmm. dogs are a little apprehensive. It can be a stressful situation for them. And if they're already stressed, you don't want to obviously add to that. So um, to Amy's point, start out with one and then, and then go from there. But always use the animal to give you feedback on how you're doing with the point work and how the dog is reacting. Because they're already stressed. But I'm going to say it wouldn't hurt. You know, here we are in the summer and we got July 4th around the corner, uh, very close by. We already, we live in New Mexico and they've already started. Uh, this culture in Albuquerque, they love their fireworks and it's really hard on all of us. Um, I don't, I'm not fond of them myself. Um, so, uh, you can start on them now. Mm -hmm. Start using them now. It's a good point. Start doing it today because it's not far off and we're already working with Hugo. So that would be a good idea. And as you get to them, you can even do them every single day during the season that you need to, or a couple times a week to help your animal move through their fears. And also um, Balanced Body asks, Balanced Body Equine asked if there will be a replay of this. And yes, there will be. Right after the show, the replay will just be here for you to watch ongoing. So, um, And I think that was it for the questions so far. I think you got to all of them. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the fireworks myself. <laughs> um, oh, Kim. Hi, Kim. <laughs> We're with you, too. <laughs> <laughs> No, Wave. Does Wave have problems with uh, thunderphobia? I didn't know. That's Kim's dog. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, Kim's dog is a beautiful, beautiful, amazing show oh, animal. Oh, wow. Retriever. Yeah, so Massive many of them dog. do. They're, it's so, I just, I kind of wish the fireworks would be, I, so I don't mean to be a curmudgeon, but I kind of wish they would really restrict them. And I guess it depends on where you live, but. <laughs> yeah, PTSD. well, I worry also about PTSD. People yeah. who are back from the war, from that Afghanistan, yeah. anywhere. You know, th this is scary stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Fact, you can use these this points on humans. Question. What's the question? It's Do you apply oh, pressure oh. sides? I tend to. Now, you know, I guess. I oh, if anyone's do. listening, the question is, do you apply Kidney 27 both sides on the front? So if anyone's listening to this on the podcast replay. Oh, okay. Actually, that was the question. What, typically, what, what we'll do is work the points on one side. Generally, they start on the right side or, or whatever side the dog is presenting and then move oh. around to the, to the opposite side. So you do kidney 27 on the right side, kidney three on the right side, and if you're adding bladder 60, you can certainly do that. Um, work independently the, the yin tang and the ba hui since those are single side points are on the, the midline. And then you could go to the left side of the animal and work those, those points being kidney 27, bladder 60, and kidney three. Okay. Another good thing about these points in particular is they're very accessible. Yeah. You, your dog could be standing up, he could be lying down, he could be, uh, you know, if they start walking and panting and hyperventilating, um, you can also work them at that time mm -hmm. and try to help them right then. Um, somebody is asking if, where was that? Um, lost it. Can we also use governing vessel 20? Um, although we didn't talk about that here, but if that's something you would use for this. You certainly can. It is uh, the closest place to heaven on the human. Ours is here. Theirs is here too. The Bach way point is the point is the same for, as the governing vessel 20 or four leggeds. Four leggeds. But yes, you could use it. It is a heat releaser. It's a calming point. And how you find it, the easiest way to find it is go to the front of the ears and then draw your fingers together to the very, very middle. That will give you governing vessel 20. Okay, I think that was, and someone's mentioning drone celebrations instead of fireworks. Some towns are doing that would be great. Oh, oh nice. wow. That would be better. Boy, is that, yeah, and they're scary too. They scare me. Kidding? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would, that's great. Okay. Oh, some towns are doing drones. Drones. drones oh, God. Instead of fireworks. Well, with, with the, the lighting. Yeah, yeah. with the, it's much yeah. Better than we are in serious drought here in the southwest and yet they're still doing firecrackers and it just doesn't make sense but you know we're not in charge yeah, right. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> oh boy do I so we that. have a whole <laughs> slew of online courses that are available um, either through our website and you can access those and then uh, and they're great. They're really, they're really fun courses. They're set up where there's information given. You take a quiz, you, then you so it reinforces what it is that you've been reading about, and that's really why we put the quiz, quizzes in is to just reinforce the right. pertinent right. information. Um, and you can take a single class, you can take a series of classes, whatever works for you, so that you can help your animal. That's really what. Our interest and intent has been about for some years now. Um, so yeah. check those out. They're, they're, they are fun. Yeah, because you as the animal people are the ones mm -hmm. who <laughs> can really help. Right. Not just, I mean, your animals, but if you want to be more effective with what you're doing, you can learn more about the meridians and how the points work. And we make sure you get enough uh, theory and understanding as well as hands-on exercises yeah. to help and, you with that. You know, it's so empowering to be able to, you know, I went through the whole program and 
did the certification and I continue to do my continuing edit at credits through Tallgrass. But it just, even if you're not going to do that, um, it's just so empowering to be able to do something yourself to help your animal like this, especially the hands-on because there's that connection. And to me as an animal communicator, I find that um, it just really enhances animal communication. It's a really great way to connect in and listen to your pet. I can see where that would really be important and valuable because you are connecting with their essence energy and the chi. Right. So that's, that's great. Yeah. That's great. I have some shows on that on here at the end, at the end of the video, you'll see some other shows that you might be interested in, including, um, an episode that Amy and Nancy were in a while back. It's been a little over a year, I think. Um, <laughs> so, and we did have a question about, uh, and by the way, if you weren't here earlier, the, all those links will be in the description for the school, for, for Tallgrass, for all their programs. Um, and a discount link, too, because I have a little discount thing down there. Um, so, Goodnight Owl asks, will this also work on rabbits? Fortunately, our dog and four cats aren't bothered by the fireworks, but our bunny doesn't like them at all. That's a really, really good question. And um, I've worked on... Um, Flamingos, um, ferrets, parrots, cows, goats. Goats, yeah. So, yes. Um, and Amy's worked on... I've worked on rabbits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we, just, it, we needed to know the number of ribs that a rabbit had. Yeah. I worked on a ferret. In California, yeah. whenever we were teaching there, people would bring us the most interesting animals. <laughs> we, had a, we had a mink. We had a ferret. We had a rabbit. Uh, it was very, it was, it's always interesting and all we really to, need to know to help you find the acupressure points on a specific animal is how many ribs do they have. And that helps us guide, uh, guides us as to uh, their anatomy. Because mm -hmm. I have uh, to ask, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, well, acupressure is based on, even though we, the points are all in soft locations in the soft tissues, the actual finding them is rel relative a lot to the bone structure. Mm -hmm. So what's your question? Um, oh, and these are just some pictures of classes and yeah. Oh, and you had another, Oh, my question, I just wanted to know about the flamingo, but we could save it till the end. Cause I see there's another. It's really interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting. They nicknamed her twisted sister. Because <laughs> Because what happened was there was a problem with the incubator. It was at a zoo. Oh. And um, she did not recover, mm -hmm. but she got a little better for a little while. But it, it um, yeah, I just worked on her neck. Oh. So, yeah. Very so that was, but I have a really, I think, interesting and fun story. They'll just take a second. Mm -hmm. A very close friend of mine was working at a. Um, a zoo in Florida and working on dolphins. There was a sick dolphin and she couldn't approach it because the dolphin was like, I am so over it. I am not coming to see you. She'd been seen by vets, blood work, blah, blah, blah. So the dolphin wouldn't come near her. So there's a dolphin that swam in front of her. And so she just sort of absent mindedly. The person. The, yeah, that <laughs> swam in front of my friend. And she. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, perhaps it might only started working points on this. That, the uh, healthy dolphin. The healthy dolphin. The healthy dolphin went over to the sick dolphin, used its nose to do the points that she was oh. working on her. And she was like, oh my gosh. And so she started working the points that she wanted to work wow. on that she thought would be beneficial. And the dolphin carried that out. So that's just. That's I incredible. Didn't, didn't do that, but it's a great it, it's just such a marvelous story of how animals intuit and how connected yeah. we are with energetic groups. that's amazing you need to write a, a book of all the things you oh, yes. animals, <laughs> experiences <laughs> yeah. oh my definitely you definitely should um, <laughs> yeah. um oh we have a question here it um, may not be immediate the yeah. other thing to understand is that Though we can sometimes we do see immediate reaction. I've had 
you know, dog get up, shake all over and walk out and no more live. But, um, or the shen disturbance is just past, gee, I'm over that. I'm, right. Dogs give things up better than humans, frankly. That's why we like working with animals. But <laughs> we don't have a story about it. Yeah, we don't hold on, you know, our owies. The dogs, if they're done with their owie, they're done with their owie. Right. Yeah. Gone. But yeah, we do have, but it can take long, a while, especially something as ingrained as a sound, loud sound phobias. And that's good to remind people of, because don't give up just because you may not see overnight, you know, the second you do it, success, you know, definitely keep going, keep, mm -hmm. keep doing it. Um, so exact and question, then, I know it must yeah. be should I across. start with Yin Tang or then Bahui when my Cypress is in the midst of a panic because of a loud blast of thunder or firework and then move to the kidney points? I always start with the calming points first, frankly. Uh, the Yin Tang. Usually in, in acupressure, you start from the head and move back. But if the dog is really stressed, which the odds are they are. You're going, I would use calm. That's why I showed, we showed the calming points first to get them to a place where they're not, be, they're, they can be receptive to the kidney points. Mm -hmm. That's really what I, we were after when we set it up that way. I should also point out that this is just a real general one. It's not specific to your dog. If it were for your dog and there was an issue for instance, where trust was needed uh, for you to be able to do it in the first place, there are specific points that have to do with the human, you're creating a greater trust yes. with the animal. <clears throat> and pericardium six is always a good one. But in this case, I would go with heart seven and pericardium seven because that's both trust and calming doing a heart point will help bring uh, energy through the, you know, through the Shen itself. Because the Shen, by the way, the spirit of the animal is housed in the heart and revealed in the eyes. But it's housed in the heart because, you know, the dog is, you know, scared and you want to help with the Shen. So you deal with the heart as well as the pericardium, which has a lot to do with being able to trust what's going to happen to them next. So there are more points. What I'm pointing out, I guess, is that it, it's not, it would be nice to start with the calming and helping create some level of bravery. But then there'd be not another step that you'd want to take that has to do with the pericardium, which is trusting, and the heart, which is building the shen, because it is a form of shen disturbance. And that's, you know, the animal is stressed, is highly stressed, and heart would help and pericardium would help. So th there are more points that would be really useful for the... What? I think yeah. I might have some videos on that too, on my channel too. If you go to the, there's a playlist on here, if anyone's watching this and later after this, um, I have a playlist, I'll put that at the end of acupressure topics, massage acupressure. Great. And I think I've talked about those, so that might be. And then you have a picture here when we didn't, I don't think you did this one yet, right? Governing well, just, it was just to point out that we, there are many key points that we teach and that you learn in our program. And the one you see on the left with Simi is the third eye and it's helping bring focus. And the middle point, I believe, is GB 26. 26, yeah. Yeah. And that is the excellent, excellent point for resusc resuscitation um, and any trauma. Yeah. Anything. It's um, shock. shock. Anything <laughs> before, you, you know, it also helps, believe it or not, and you have to be careful, but it helps with seizures as well. It's a bit, it's kind of the go-to emergency point. And that's a point you can actually tap on, not just hold, but actually tap to stimulate it. Um, and, and tap with, not super hard, but a level of um, significance. Purpose. Yes. <laughs> Intent, as yeah. we say. 
And the last point is large intestine 11. And it is a point that we use very effectively for balancing with lung and also the immune system. Because in Chinese medicine, frankly, the immune system is absolutely everything. We want to prevent illness. We want to create a harmonious flow of qi before anything invades the body, it's before it gets too cold, before you get anything else. So I don't know if you can tell in that picture, but uh, large intestine 11 is located in the cubital crease and you go back towards the elbow to the large divot. And that's where large intestine 11 is. It's a super point for immune system building. And, and again, very easy to access on most dogs. Can, yeah, any dog, really. Any dog. Just yeah. lift the paw, slide your, lift the paw. I'm lifting my paw. <laughs> <laughs> slide your hand, cr crink your elbow, slide your hand back a little bit and feel for that deep spot. That's just a deep spot right in this there. So that's large intestinal lemon. So there's so many wonderful points, but you know what? Almost every practitioner, you know, even though there's a lot of points, only learn approximately 50 points and use them in their day-to-day -day practice. Mm -hmm. So, and they're commonly used points and they're very effective because they're the most powerful points. And that point too is great. You know, like a lot of these points, you've said this, at some point too, that not only energetically on the, on kind of that level, um, emotionally, but also locally, like my dog has a chronic, um, his elbow, he, he had a thing happen before we adopted him and he had to have surgery and all this. So that point's great for him too, for that, mm -hmm. to support his chronic elbow issue. Um, uh, and Small intestine four, or yeah. four limb. It's a nice distal point for the four limb, so that will help. <laughs> it's just there, there are a lot of wonderful points yeah. to work with to help your animal with any tendon ligament issues, uh, digestion, arthritis. You know, it just goes. You can do it. You're 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 there and you you're always available to help to help animals and that's what we're after is to support as many people in learning how to uh help as many as animals they can get their hands on literally <laughs> literally yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so empowering to be able to help your own animal because i mean you know you think of course we need our veterinarians and it's wonderful Absolutely. you know especially if they can do acupuncture but really you, you can't take your pet there every day or every other day or, or what have you. Usually most of us don't have the means or the time to. And mm -hmm. so if you can do these things at home, it's just so wonderful. So this, this school has really um, opened that world up for so many of us. So I encourage people to go to the site and just check it out. See what you think. Just play around on there. There's so many different charts and books. See, like this page shows you, um, AccuCat, AccuDog, AccuCourse, and all these charts. I have all these charts. <laughs> They're wonderful. The other thing is, if you do when when you do go to our site, there's um, a little tab that says blogs and one that says articles, and every a lot of the specific conditions that we've been talking about, They're you'll there. be able to find. I think there's a, maybe forty five to fifty five different um, articles and blogs and conditions that you can find to work with there. Just take your time and take a look at those. Good resources. Yeah, just have fun in there. Yeah. Are there any other questions before we? Yes, questions. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, I don't see any others. Let me. See, we've solved all the problems of the world. Yeah, <laughs> no scared dogs this 4th of July. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. It is yeah. such a shame that they have to go through this. And it is. And we, you know, if you're watching and you know, you know, please share this video, you know, for people who didn't catch it or aren't aware of the channel or, you know, what have you. And, you know, because there are so many animals that really could benefit from this. So if you have friends. I do have this um, link posted on 
uh, Facebook and Instagram. Um, I have all that information in the description. You know, if you want to share it on any of those, we always appreciate it. And on YouTube as well. So we just appreciate getting the word out. And um, I really welcome to everybody who's new here tonight. There were so many new people that came to who know, you know, Nancy and Amy. And so thank you so much for being here. I hope you come back, you know, subscribe and hit the notification bell that's supposed to let you know when there's a new video. It doesn't always, but <laughs> that's the idea. So it was a wonderful presentation. We so appreciate it. Is there anything that we didn't touch on that you think, you know, maybe we should? Um, except to say thank you very much for yes. having us. We oh, really my pleasure. I'm thrilled. To reach out to more people and, and appreciate what you, you have done and are continuing to do with your podcast. It's really very lovely. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. We're, very, we're proud of you, actually. Oh, very, very proud much. Of you. You've done some wonderful work. And communicating it to the world is so important. And yes. it's right there on YouTube, so it's always accessible. Right, exactly. Come back and and just you know binge watch, <laughs> and and also like I said, uh, the Tallgrass um has a YouTube channel and that link will be in the description, so you can um, gosh, you know what? I think I forgot ahead of time to post the video you sent me of Jill, who's one of the instructors. I forgot uh, to do that. I will do that. I'll post that. Um, but Great. you'll have a link, everybody, in the description if you want to go and just check out whatever videos are on their YouTube channel, so including that one. Perfect. Okay. Again, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. And stick around, Amy and uh, Nancy, so we can take a picture. <laughs> Don't hang up. <laughs> thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful fourth. Have a wonderful, quiet, hopefully, fourth. <laughs> just oh. give your animals a hug. <laughs> take care, everyone. Bye.